Good morning, everyone. Thank you all for being here today at one of the six severe weather shelter sites opening today. We have other sites expanding and more ready to open throughout the weekend. Being here to support our community during this severe weather. We're here in Cook Plaza in Gresham to share critical news and make sure that our community stays safe during these next several days when we're expecting snow and especially frigid temperatures. This morning, I'm declaring a state of emergency that begins at 5 p.m. today, Friday, January 12th, and will be in effect through noon on Tuesday, January 16th. This is in response to the deadly cold winter temperatures tonight, likely snow tomorrow, and high gusty winds, particularly in the eastern part of the county. This emergency order helps our community provide shelter to everyone who needs it and saves lives. While some may be hearing about our severe weather for the first time today, Multnomah County works year round to plan and prepare. We've been putting the move on um, plans into action, working to address this impending emergency for several days now. Beginning Tuesday, as the, um, the awareness of temperatures dropping, more than 100 groups working with the Joint Office's Supply Distribution Center began covering ground in 30, 37 zones across the county, distributing gear to people sleeping unsheltered. We know there are critical tools to stay safer, drier, and warmer. In recent days, this has included more than 3,000 blankets, 1,500 ponchos, more than nearly 100 warm hats, and more than 1,000 pairs of warm gloves, more than 1,700 pairs of socks, and hundreds of sleeping bags, hot hands, and other helpful gear. We are working closely with providers and volunteers to make sure more survival gear gets into the hands of those who need it the most. Our response also includes daily coordination calls, increasing training to volunteers and employees, and commitments from the staff of the Behavioral Health Resource Center and other key providers to be open and available throughout this emergency. We're prepared, we're engaged, and we've gotten a lot of gear out the door and onto the streets in this last week. Our staff is also engaging with partners and providers like Cultivate Initiatives, Do Good Multnomah, and Transition Projects to open severe weather shelters. These shelters are for anyone without adequate shelter including not having access to adequate heat and what they need to stay warm and safe. We are standing up shelters at the following locations tonight. The one we're in here, Cook Plaza at 19421 Southeast Stark in Gresham. We have the Salvation Army location at 5325 North Williams Avenue. Friendly House is opening at 1737 Northwest 26th Avenue, Ascension Church at 743 Southeast 76th Avenue, and a Powell Street location at 7332 Southeast Powell Boulevard. We are also adding capacity at an existing shelter site that's at 120 Southeast Market Street. Again, these are opening this evening at 8 p.m. These locations are throughout the county and will provide 445 beds tonight with a system ready to expand to meet the needs throughout this weekend as the emergency continues. Our goal with these shelters is making sure that there's a bed, comfort, and support for everyone who lacks a safe, warm, dry place to be. I want to be clear that no one will be turned away, and I very much encourage people to come in from the storm, come in from the bitter cold, get dry, and stay warm. One of the scariest things about this coming weather is that we know temperatures are going to dip well below freezing and likely stay that way, especially in East Portland and East County. Frostbite in these temperatures could set in in less than an hour from being outdoors. This will make conditions much worse for anyone without adequate shelter, so we ask you to seek shelter as soon as possible. Because shelters are open, transportation is available. This means fares or free on TriMet for anyone who needs shelter, and we will be working to provide 24-7 transport to shelters throughout Multnomah County. Our emergency, a medical response system, has also moved to emergency weather operations. 
That means we're ensuring the highest quality pre-hospital patient care by sending ambulances to the nearest hospital, among other changes. We appreciate the work of all of our emergency providers in making sure that people get to the nearest hospital in their time of crisis. I want everyone to know that there are things that you can do to help during this weather event. I'm encouraging everyone to be cautious with travel, to stay out of the cold tonight, and to be prepared for the snow event tomorrow. Please check in with your neighbors, especially elderly or vulnerable neighbors and loved ones, to make sure they have what they need to weather the storm. I'd ask that you keep checking on people as this weather event persists. These conditions take tolls on our neighbors, and your care, your support, your action can directly save lives. Tips for getting through this cold weather include wearing dry, loose layers, wearing a hat, drinking warm, sweet liquids to keep your body temperature up, and making sure that you're not waiting for a situation to become an emergency. Get somewhere warm as soon as possible. We will be updating the community with information about shelter, transport, outreach, and other services on an ongoing basis over the next several days. We may reach out to this community to volunteer and help us get through this challenging time. We'll be in touch more specifically when we can use your time and talent as a volunteer to provide direct services. For updates on this situation, please follow our social media accounts or our Care for When It's Cold website, which is multco.us slash cold. This is where we'll update the community on our needs throughout the emergency, so please check often. This is also where you can find information about where you can find care for yourself. Please take care of yourself and others during this time. Now I'd like to bring up our brand new Multnomah County Health Officer, Dr. Richard Bruno, to talk about the threats to life and health and how we can all stay safe over the next several days. Thank you. Dr. Bruno. Thank you, Chair. Uh, good morning, everybody. I'm Richard Bruno, the Health Officer for Multnomah County Health Department. And this winter weather is really going to be deadly, as the chairwoman said. If, uh, so it's really important to stay warm and dry and safe uh, over the next few days. Uh, you can start by dressing in several layers of warm clothing, wearing a water-resistant jacket, staying out of the wind uh, when you get wet is also a good idea. Uh, for those of, who are older or working outdoors and taking care of infants, should watch out for signs of hypothermia and frostbite. Hypothermia happens when somebody's body temperature gets below 95 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, it could be life-threatening and cause people to be confused or shiver. Uh, frostbite can cause fingers or toes or ears to get numb and look pale, and uh, it can happen in a matter of minutes when it's really cold. Uh, another major wintertime risk is carbon monoxide poisoning, uh, which happens when people try to stay warm by burning fuels indoors without proper ventilation. Uh, unventilated carbon monoxide gas becomes an invisible killer since it's odorless and colorless and poisonous. Uh, symptoms can include fatigue and headaches, dizziness, nausea, confusion, bright red skin, loss of coordination, or loss of consciousness. So if you suspect anybody suffering from hypothermia or frostbite or carbon monoxide poisoning, please call 911 right away. Uh, if you notice any signs of hypothermia or frostbite, uh, you can try and get someone into a, a warm shelter, a warm room, having them take off any wet clothing or wrapping them in warm, dry blankets. It's important not to rub frostbitten skin or use hot water or electric heating pads or stoves since excessive heat can cause more damage. Uh, if you see someone who's not dressed warmly enough, you can call the City of Portland's non-emergency response line at 503-823-3333 and request a welfare check. Uh, and please, if you, if you don't have a safe way to stay warm or if you don't have a plan uh, over this weekend, please try to spend a few hours at one of our warming shelters. Uh, as the chair mentioned, you can find information on these warming shelters and, and details about where to go at multco.us slash cold or by calling 211. Thank you so much. And uh, next we'll have uh, Rachel Pearl. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Rachel Pearl. I'm the Deputy Director for the Department of County Human Services with Multnomah County. Uh, de uh, the Department of County Human Services is one of the lead uh, agencies that helps to plan for severe weather sheltering in the county when we have events like this. And this planning is year-round. Uh, so we are looking at facilities. We are preparing and planning and training our staff to be able to come in and run these shelters. 
and we are working with our contracted providers to be able to have additional spaces that they're staffing and we're looking at um, making sure that we have enough facilities um, in place for this uh, these events to be um, we have spaces for people to go which is really important and you know this is um, something that for folks that want to know what do I do if I'm trying to um, access a shelter so we do partner with 211 we want to encourage people if they're outside and not sure where to go not sure what the closest shelter is to them not sure what transportation is available so that they can get into a shelter is, is access to one one call them they know what shelter spaces have uh, capacity for people to come um, and they have access to our transportation resources to help folks get there and again like the chair mentioned uh, we do have trimet available for rides and we're hopeful um, that this weather doesn't prevent um, trimet from running this go around so that's that's going to be great as well in addition to um, Planning for shelters, uh, thinking about our vulnerable residents who are living inside but are uh, electricity dependent. Um, so we are uh, calling those folks. We have partnerships with PGE to be sure that we can notify um, people and, and partner with PGE to make sure uh, electricity is restored for those folks um, quicker. And so that's an ongoing um, partnership with our aging and disability services and our intellectual development services division as well within the Department of County Human services. Um, what folks can expect when they come into a shelter, um, as many have mentioned, this is a warm, dry space. We are uh, prepared for folks that come in with wet clothing to be able to give them dry clothing. We know that's critically important to prevent hypothermia, is to be able to replace um, wet clothes as folks come into the shelter. We do have food, um, water, uh, and a safe place for them to be. We are well staffed, so we feel pretty confident about that. So we've been doing a lot of preparation throughout the year to be sure that we're prepared for this. Um, we've been, we always take uh, lessons from each activation. Um, we look at ways to be more prepared. We know that weather's dynamic, so we have contingency planning always going into place to be sure if we need additional spaces for folks to go, um, that we are working to open additional uh, spaces. So we know that um, if this weather plays out, that we will open additional locations throughout the weekend to make sure that we have enough space for folks who need to get inside to get inside. Um, and so that is uh, what I have to say for you today. And I think next up is Caleb Cutter from the amazing executive director from Cultivate. Good morning, all. Uh, Caleb Coder, Executive Director with Cultivate Initiatives. Uh, want to first thank Multnomah County and especially East County small cities. Uh, this is an all hands effort. Uh, Cultivate Initiatives is eager to be operating Cook Plaza as a severe weather shelter. Uh, this is near and dear to our hearts. Uh, many of our staff that will be operating this severe weather shelter have once uh, come to these shelters for life-saving emergencies, and now they will be the ones operating this shelter. And so there's no disconnect between the neighbors that we are will be serving during this event and the neighbors that uh, are, are staffing and being uh, supportive of this activation. Uh, it is going to be cold, and we are here. Uh, we are working diligently to uh, prepare our neighbors uh, of the weather that is coming and ensuring that this is a safe, warm place for our community. This is more than just life-saving. This is also an opportunity for us to build relationships with our neighbors and provide services and supports immediate and also for time to come. And so I want to thank the many people that have spent tirelessly to make this uh, a safe activation and will continue the work. Uh, would like to invite Peabot uh, to come up. Dylan. Thank you. Um, and uh, thank you, uh, Chair Vega Peterson, for bringing everyone together today. Um, uh, the city-county partnership on winter weather and emergency response is very strong, and we're in constant communication, uh, city staff and county staff, uh, in preparation for this event and in all uh, emergency uh, situations. Um, first, I'd like to thank the news media for getting the word out this week about the need for the public to prepare for this winter storm. Uh, they say an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, and 
that's definitely the case when it comes to severe events uh, like the forecast we have for this weekend. So uh, thank you. We've seen the public gathering the supplies and food and other uh, things that they'll need. Um, and we, we think the message is getting across and 100% and appropriately. Um, we'd also like to thank Portland Public Schools for uh, announcing last night an early release this afternoon. Um, that uh, given the forecast of, uh, of snow that we had for this afternoon was 100% uh, uh, appropriate and uh, prevents uh, thousands of uh, families from uh, getting in uh, you know, hazardous uh, travel conditions. So uh, that said, we've also been saying uh, all week and uh, all uh, in recent months that uh, we've learned with experience that uh, forecasts of winter weather events change in the days and even the hours leading up to an event. So a week ago, people were observing weather apps that said snow on Thursday, Friday. Um, Monday, we shared a forecast that we had heard of, uh, you know, Tuesday night and Friday, Saturday. We got a little dress rehearsal from Mother Nature overnight, Tuesday night. Uh, many of you saw that in the West Hills. Um, and as of yesterday, they were saying, uh, you know, potential for snow Friday afternoon and evening and Saturday morning. Uh, this morning, that has changed. Uh, the forecast uh, from the National Weather Service now calls for snow to arrive uh, in the Portland area Saturday morning rather than Friday night or Friday afternoon. Uh, they're still saying uh, temperatures will drop this afternoon and actually winds will pick up and the uh, uh, forecast for wind, wind speed and gusts has actually been amplified for this afternoon, so potentially 40 mile an hour winds this afternoon east of I-205. So the combination of cold temperatures and the rain that we have this morning on our streets means we could have some uh, icy travel conditions on roads uh, starting Friday afternoon and evening. So caution is uh, urged and we I hope everyone will remain vigilant and keep uh, following the forecasts as they're updated uh, throughout the day today and throughout the weekend. Uh, the forecast remains for cold temperatures, freezing temperatures through Sunday and Monday. So um, much of the preparation uh, you've been doing this week, uh, you're buying supplies, you're preparing your family, uh, will pay off and will be uh, pay dividends in your safety this weekend. Uh, PBOT has been getting ready. Uh, we've been preparing our crews. On Thursday, we uh, dressed the city's entire uh, snow and ice fleet. Um, our 55 plows, our dozen uh, salt spreaders, uh, other equipment you can see listed on the PBOT uh, Winter Weather Hazards website. Uh, PBOT crews this morning started 12-hour shifts and will continue to work uh, 24 hours a day in uh, a day shift of 12 hours and a night shift of 12 hours uh, starting this morning through the weekend as long as needed uh, to address the weather hazards. Peabody is prepared and we're glad to see the public getting prepared as well. So uh, everyone should continue to monitor the forecasts and see how they will continue to change uh, and understand that sometimes the forecasts are wrong. Sometimes uh, a snow or ice or temperature event will arrive earlier or later or be of a different magnitude than forecast. Um, severe weather happens sometimes, uh, but severe consequences don't have to happen if we prepare, if we communicate, if we work together. Uh, we can help everyone get home safe. Thank you very much. And with, with that, we'll hear from Portland Fire, Lieutenant. Hi, I'm Terry Foster with Portland Fire. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, first of all, I appreciate everybody getting together here and preparing for the worst. Uh, Portland Fire, we're always ready for uh, expect the worst and hope for the best. This is one of those situations where we expect snow and in, in, in a lot of it and cold temperatures. Um, if that changes, we'll have to change some of the things we do. So we, we do ask uh, residents to be prepared for the worst. Um, one of those things is power outages. We want you to think about um, having blankets, staying warm, and using warming shelters if you're not able to do that. Um, space heaters, like the doctor mentioned, uh, carbon monoxide is a, is a real risk for us. So we ask that if you're using space heaters, make sure they're electric ones and, and you're well ventilated if you use something that does combust. 
Um, and with that, if you have carbon monoxide detectors, make sure they're um, operating properly. Um, know your home. Oftentimes in these conditions, we have pipes break and we want people to know, hey, we're, we're out there responding to a lot of emergencies and that will happen if we have extended cold temperatures. So if you're able to figure out where your water shutoff is to your house, make sure you do that. Um, and that'll so solve a lot of problems. We will be moving slower as we'll have chains and uh, cables on our rigs. So just know that that does happen and it'll take a little longer to respond. Um, check on your neighbors. A lot of times when there's power outages, people forget that sometimes you have elderly neighbors or people that need help. And those folks may need help getting to a warming shelter as well. Um, and, and although it seems like you want to get out in some of these conditions, know that sheltering in place and staying home is probably the safest thing for you and your family. Conditions change, and when, when surfaces get icy, people get hurt. Um, and, and if you have an injury out there, we'll have to respond to that. So if you're able to, shelter in place. Um, with that, I'll turn it over to Commissioner Stegman. Good morning, everyone. I'm Lori Stegman. I'm the Multnomah County Commissioner representing East Multnomah County. My district includes the city of Gresham that we're in, as well as, well as Fairview, Troutdale, Wood Village, the Corbett area, and the unincorporated areas all the way up to the Hood River County line. So I'm really uh, glad that we're here at the Cook Plaza site. Uh, this warming shelter has been something that I've been working hard on to establish as a resource that will meet East County's unique severe weather needs. <clears throat> Those of you that live out here in East Multnomah County know that severe weather uh, has a much larger impact on this part of the county. Uh, the east winds we experience here are unlike anywhere else. And that means that the risk of ice and snow become exponentially more dangerous. <clears throat> a wind chill can, can make a simple emergency into a life and death situation which is why our emergency management teams have been working with East County jurisdictions and service areas, along with many community partners, to ensure resources and shelter are available to keep our community as safe as possible. With plunging temperatures and snow on the way, we urge you not to venture out only if you absolutely have to. Again, we ask you to check on your friends and your neighbors, especially those who may be elderly and live alone. Whether you are volunteering at a shelter, caring for family, or making those necessary last minute errands, please make sure that you have extra supplies in your car. As has been mentioned, emergency response may be overwhelmed, and one of the best things that we can do is be prepared for any situation. And for those living unsheltered, the next few days are especially dangerous in East Multnomah County. If you're concerned about someone you see during colder conditions, such as an individual who may not be dressed for the weather, please, please call the non-emergency response line at 311, which is also the 503-823-3333 number, to request a welfare check. I want to thank our East County cities and community partners who've helped to make the shelter here at Cook Plaza a reality and for their continued dedication to all of our residents. Please be safe and let's make sure that we take care of one another. Thank you. And now we're going to open it up for questions, but not before I recognize that we have um, uh, the expert here, our emergency management director, Chris Voss. So you can also direct questions to him. Go ahead. If you say, if you want to call out your uh, outlet and start, I think Blair, you are first among equals. Uh, my question is for the county chair. Do you know if the city of Portland is stopping camp removals this weekend, given the weather? And if that is a move that you would support? Um, yes, so I... I don't know the answer to that question. I think the, the city of Portland would probably be able to answer it. I don't um, believe that they have been doing removal, but we can we can find out and get the answer for you at that point. Is that something you support? Of stopping removals? You know, I think that, so for the last, um, since at least Tuesday, we have had outreach teams going out to 37 different um, divisions throughout the county, reaching out to people. Um, where they are located when they're living outside, handing out supplies, letting them know that the severe weather, the freezing temperatures are coming this weekend and encouraging people to get the help they need. So I, um, that work is so important because 
we know that these temperatures are life-threatening. We know that people who are living outside, especially for multiple nights, are at risk of severe injury, even death. Um, and so um, that outreach has been critical. So I, I agree, like letting people stay where they are for now, but really so that we can know where people are, we can be doing that outreach, we can be communicating them and encouraging them to come inside. And that's the message that I would send is that it is so important um, for people who normally are outside to, to come inside to find a safe, warm place to be because these truly are life threatening um, um, temperatures. Thank you. Kind of follow up on the outreach portion. Uh, will that outreach continue on um, through the weekend? And what division of the county is doing that outreach to different uh, camps and throughout the homeless community? Yes, that outreach will continue um, throughout the weekend, throughout the the um, entire severe weather event. And um, that is being there is some the coordination that is happening is through the Joint Office of Homeless Services, but it's it's mainly being done by many of our providers and partners who normally do that outreach work. It's done in a coordinated way. Yeah, we have a phased approach to this activation. So uh, we plan to add on Saturday if if everything continues and we remain open uh, around 140 additional beds. But we're looking at contingency planning around that, depending on how Friday night goes. You know, we want to look at what the numbers are, um, and then we'll uh, open some additional beds. Our our goal is always to try to get to we we. As part of our assumption planning, looking at what happened last year, um, how many people we know are living outside, we're continuing to look at those numbers to determine like how many how many beds we think might be appropriate. Uh, so our goal is is um, over a longer activation to get towards uh, over a thousand beds, um, and we're hopeful that we'll be able to get there uh, through this activation. Um, so we'll start at that. Uh, around 450, um, a little bit more than that on night one, which is more than we typically have seen, but we feel like with the cold, we want to be um, extra cautious. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, there are two on one. Um, how staffed will that be this week? Because I know in the past there's been trouble with not enough staffing and answering rich calls. So has that been prepared for it? Yeah, I, I think that was a uh, several years ago um, where 2 and one struggled with staffing and that um, has been addressed. They're very well prepared. We, we reach out to all of our partners well in advance when we are looking out at forecasts and we think it might be possible that we activate. We're talking to them, making sure that they're staffing up, um, talking to our contracted providers as well, making sure that they're staffing up so that we are well prepared to have coverage throughout 24-7 um, throughout an activation. So 2 and one is, is well prepared.